I want to focus this particular podcast on physics based artifacts. Artifacts are any errors in the perception or representation on any information introduced by modalities or techniques. Especially in CT, the artifacts can seriously degrade the images and can often make images diagnostically unstable. Artifacts can also sometimes mimic clinical lesions that can really throw off a physician reviewing an images because they can really mimic clinical image lesions, which um, I'm going to show some examples later, later podcast. So I like to group the artifacts into different types. As listed here, the physics-based artifacts result from physical processes involved in the acquisition of CT data. The patient-based artifacts are caused due to patient movement or presence of metallic materials inside the patient or on the patient and so forth. The third type of artifact categories can be classified as the scanner-based artifacts, which are due to imperfection in scanner function itself. Also, the other se another category of artifacts are helical and multi-section technique artifacts, which are produced by image reconstruction processes. So the, the, the objective of this few podcast on artifacts will be to go through under each of these category, provide some examples, how they are caused, and how it can be eliminated, and so forth. So regarding artifacts, the design features incorporated into modern CT scanners minimizes some type of artifacts. Some artifacts can be partially corrected by the software provided by the scanner. In many instances, Careful patient positioning and optimum selection of scan parameters are most important factors in avoiding CT artifact. Among the physics-based artifacts, we can broadly look into three types of physics-based artifact. One is the beam hardening art artifacts, partial volume artifacts, and finally undersampling. I'm going to focus on these three types of artifacts in this particular podcast. So what is beam hardening? Beam hardening is a feature where the X-ray spectrum shifts to a higher effective energies due to removal of lower energy X-ray photons. Shown on this plot is a X-ray tube spectrum um, shown in different energies. As you can see the shape of this spectrum shifts or the peak of this particular curve shifts towards the right side as the X-rays passes through 20 centimeter of water or 30 centimeter of water. Assuming 20 centimeter of soft tissue or in a patient size or 30 centimeter of the patient size, which automatically hardens the beam, which means, here is the principle. The soft X-rays produced by the X-rays penetrating the patient will get absorbed on the skin surface and do not contribute to image formation instead contribute to higher skin dose. So in reality, we harden the beam even before it enters the patient. So beam hardening is required to some extent to remove soft x-rays and harden beam so that it has sufficient energy to penetrate the patient. Shown here is the x-ray spectrum and filtration changes of the spectrum. As you introduce more spectrum, more filter, the beam get hardened, which basically implies the, the soft x-rays are removed from the beam. How does it apply to CT? So under the beam's hardening artifacts, there are two types of artifacts. One is the cupping artifact. Second one is the streaks and band, dark bands. In this discussion of artifacts, um, this does not imply a complete comprehensive study of artifact. I'm only focusing on some of the key or important artifacts. So in no one should not assume that this is all about, this is covering the entire artifact families. I'm just focusing on the key and important ones. So what is cupping artifact? So here shown is a cupping artifact can be thought of as possible. Imagine you're imagining, um, you're imaging a uniform cylinder. So when X-ray is passing through a mid portion of a uniform cylindrical phantom, they are more hardened 
more than those passing through the edges because they are passing through more materials. So on your left hand side in this profile, a uniform cylinder, ideally the projection should be the, the, the solid line. But in reality, the projection coming out of the patient or the object is more of the dotted line, which is due to beam hardening. So if you, if you measure the CT number or the attenuation across the cylinder without any type of artificial calibration corrections, you would see the image as shown in the center where you can see there is a uh, increased densities or increase in signal uh, uh, intensity on the periphery and less so in the center. So if you just simply measure the CT number across these, uh, the uniform cylinder, the CT number profile looks more like a cupping. That's why it's called a cupping artifact. The one way it's corrected is we do a calibration correction to correct for this in uh, inhomogeneity or irregularity, therefore making the CT number equal across the uniform cylinder. There is a second type of beam hardening effect called the streaks and the dark bands. In a very heterogeneous cross section such as shown here in the chest CT, dark bands or streaks can appear between two dense objects in image. As shown in the yellow mark, this is coming out of the aorta area where it is of the vessel injected with contrast medium. So the X-ray passing through this contrast is getting, getting more absurd and, and the adjacent area creates what is called as a dark bands or streaks. So this occurs since portion of the beam passing through one of the object at certain tubular position is hardened less than when it passes through both objects at other tube positions. Especially this occurs in a body region um, and in scan when contrast medium is used. Shown here is an example of a cardiac um, or a chest CT of a cardiac CT exam where the contrast medium is creating these streaking artifacts uh, coming out of the vessels. There are a number of features one can utilize to minimize beam hardening. The most common uh, features used to minimize beam hardening is use of filtration, Second is calibration correction. Third is uh, using a beam hardening correction software. When you say filtration, either the beam is hardened even before it enters the patient by introducing a flat piece of uniform alternating material, such as aluminum material at the entry point of the X-ray beam, and also having a bow tie filters installed in the X-ray collimator that is used to pre-harden the beam. Second type of features used to minimize beam hardening is by having what is called as calibration correction. So manufacturers use a range of uniform phantoms to correct for the cupping artifacts. That's why it becomes equally important when, the, when we scan a patient to choose the right scan field of view to match the corresponding correction, um, the uniform phantom which adapts corresponding calibration corrections into the image reconstruction. Third one is the beam hardening correction software. This software uh, is like an iterative correction um, algorithm which minimizes this uh, such artifact. Here's an example of a skull phantom uh, shown prior to some correction. On the left hand side, because of this uh, uh, um, uh, increased attenuation on the bony surface, there is a blurring between the bone and soft tissue interface at all point. That blurring between the bone is, is, this is on the left hand side, I'm going to repeat this slide. In this particular slide showing here is an example of a blurring between a bone and a soft tissue interface. This is an image of a skull phantom which consists of two variedly different attenuating material. So there is a blurring between the bone and the soft tissue interface. If proper bone correction is applied, you can see the uh, images after the uh, bone correction is applied, which eliminates this blurring between the dense and the soft tissue interface. The, here is another type of beam hardening artifacts, which has called the dark band artifact. And this is to a large extent eliminated by calibration, applying proper calibration, 
plus applying iterative beam hardening correction. So here, this is an image of a, a posterior fossa showing dark banding that occurs between dense objects, um, as you can shown by the yellow arrow arrow. When this, the dark band is still showing up even when only calibration correction is applied. Without the calibration correction applied, it could be shown even worse because of the blurringness and the star streak artifact. So the calibration correction eliminates the blurring and to some extent this, um, uh, the dark band, but still there is uh, dark bands exist between the dense object. On the image B, the same location, that particular uh, dark banding is eliminated when iterative beam hardening correction is applied. The, another classic type of physics-based artifact is the pa partial volume artifact. This occurs when a dense object is lying off-centered. It protrudes part way into width of the X-ray beam. So shown here is a cartoon of a person with a very dark, dense object showing at, at, at different points during their um, data acquisition around the patient. So the partial volume artifacts shown here is like on this middle image th shown is three cylindrical object showing this um, partial volume artifact dark bands coming out of these particular uh, objects. Partial volume artifacts are best avoided by using very thin acquisition section as shown on the third image. So these days most of the CT acquisition is acquired at the thinnest sl slice possible to avoid partial volume art artifacts and also to help in the image, uh, the, the 3D image reconstruction and so forth. Another type of uh, uh, artifacts are the photon starvation. This is classically seen when scanning a very extremely obese patient. Um, the st photon starvation occurs at the center of the patient's uh, image where there is less photons are um, passing through the object because a lot of it are observed. The other place it occurs is like around the highly attenuating areas such as shoulders and hips. Shown on the left side of this image is a phantom image of a shoulder because of the high attenuation on the shoulder area you see this photon starvation uh, with a very noisy projection uh, are almost creating a streak artifact around the shoulder area. One of the ways to eliminate photon starvation is to increase the X-ray intensity, X-ray flux. Um, to a large extent these days manufacturers use the methodology of what is called as the automatic tube current modulation. The system will automatically increase the tube current necessity to penetrate the thick portion thereby eliminating the photon starvation. Shown on the right hand side is the tube current modulation as a function of tube angle which will eliminate to a large extent this photon starvation artifact. A third type of um, uh, physics based artifact is the undersampling. Shown here is an image of a very high dense object such as a Teflon and a uniform surface. What happened here is like the understampling is caused when too large an interval between projection occurs. Um, that can result to misregistration related to sharp edges and small objects. So and shown on by the white arrow there is this uh, streaks showing up and that's due to the undersampling of the projection data. We call this as view aliasing. This occurs this results in a fine stripes appear to radiate from the edge of a dense structure. And this is to a large extent minimized by simply um, increasing the number of projection per rotation. Under the same undersampling, there is another one called a ray, ray aliasing. This stripes appearing close to the structure are caused by undersampling within the projection shown on the image with the yellow, yellow uh, arrows. This again is minimized by specialized high spatial resolution technique uh, such as quarter detector shift or flying focal spot. In summary, the physics based artifact are caused by physical processes involved in CT acquisition. 
the city physics based artifact to a large extent can be eliminated or reduced with proper calibration beam hardening correction software sufficient projection data and by selecting the appropriate scan field of view thank you